Welcome to my Nintendo Switch review of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Is this a game that is worth buying or not? You are going to decide after you hear what I have to say. Now, it has happened again. Nintendo has decided to shine some new light on older mainline Pokemon titles, this time remaking Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, originally released back in 2006 for the Nintendo DS. I happened to be around at that time and experiencing them at their fullest when they were new. This is my original DS version of Pokemon Diamond and I loved Pokemon Diamond and I had over 200 hours of playtime in that, going completely nuts with completing the Pokedex, even going so far as to order two really expensive guidebooks online. And this was before I knew what eBay was, so these books were the first things that I ever ordered from a foreign website. I was obsessed, to put it lightly. So how does the remake hold up for the Nintendo Switch? I will go over story, gameplay, graphics and music to then tell you how I feel on revisiting this nostalgia. Story. This is how I do my game reviews everyone. Story. I'm going to explain this for people who are absolutely new to Pokemon as well by saying that it is a creature collecting RPG where you also use these creatures to do battles. You catch these small pocket monsters with Pokeballs, which are devices to store these creatures. It is a funny concept when I say it like that, but people love it. Pokemon has been around for quite some time now, and I'm pretty sure most people have heard about Pokemon and they know the general idea. So Pokemon is an old and very established franchise by now. All of their games are very kid friendly and also in my opinion easy to progress in. This time you are a brand new Pokemon trainer starting out in the region of Sinnoh, which is based on a real life Japanese island actually. You get to choose one of the three starting Pokemons and off you go on an adventure towards becoming the very best and catching them all. The more Pokemon that you collect, the more you will fill out your Pokedex, which is a little device for storing the information on the creatures that you find in the world. There are several gems across the land which will be equivalent to boss fights. The story revolves mainly around collecting all of these, the gym badges I mean, to then prove you are the best Pokemon master. You also have a ton of side plots around the evil gang called the Galactics and also around some legendary Pokemons. Most NPCs around the world, they will tell you tips and tricks on how to play the game. They rarely portray much depth or say anything with a very deep or profound meaning. It is a light-hearted game and its main purpose is just to make you escape reality for a while. Gameplay! The best section. What? It plays like most Pokemon games. It actually does. You start off by choosing your gender, your name and your look. You can later customize your clothes though. You move from town to town, you collect the gym badges and collect Pokemons. But battling with other NPC trainers is a lot of the gameplay. You will be a lot in battle. It is a turn-based battle with elemental weaknesses. That is the main concept of the battling in Pokemon games. And the Pokemon trainers, they are plentiful and everywhere. It is a very easy game and I don't think I ever wiped out my party. Ever. The world is fairly big and you can later traverse by fast traveling, also known as flying, or by biking. You have a pocket gadget that back in the day was a bottom screen thing on the DS. Even though the Switch doesn't have two screens, it's nice to see that it is still present. But I don't use it. Pokemon walking behind you has returned. Finally! Pokemon walking actually behind you in game. It's such a simple fun concept thing that they once upon a time they gave it to us then took it back and now we have gotten it again back again. I mean it's something that they started in Pokemon Yellow and then they quit doing it and then they 
gave it back to us in Soul Silver and Heart uh, something. The DS remix of Silver and Gold. And then we didn't see it again, sort of thing. Until Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And now it wasn't in Sword and Shield. But now we, <laughs> it's so random. You get it or you don't. But you get it in this game. There are plenty of endgame content to delve into, even after you have collected all of the 8 gym badges and defeated the Elite 4. Like completing the National Pokedex, which I know Tiny House is really into. Or really nerd out on Pokemon breeding or shiny Pokemon hunting, which are the main projects for every serious Pokemon player. There is a grand underground where you can do some fun exploring using the explorer kit, which you will obtain fairly early on. Down here you will find rarer Pokemon, so this is a whole fun thing on its own. Customization is here and you can buy different clothes to wear, which is fun always, I love that stuff. And there's also stickers that you can collect to customize how your Pokeball animation will look for each Pokemon that you have in your party. An animation that pops up when you throw your Pokeball. Fun. There are also even more gimmicks and gameplay style elements in here like Puffin making, which are candies for your Pokemon. Also there's contests that you can partake in with a rhythm game. You can also trade and battle with other real players online. A lot of things to do. Graphics. Since this is a remake, the graphics are fully updated to fit a more modern graphical style. However, I don't feel the graphics knocks us out of the park or anything. They are simply okay. And the character models themselves, they look a bit on the simpler side, with a chibi style to them. Personally, I would actually have loved to see more of a cell shaded graphical style in a sort of Pokemon remake game like this. Cell shaded. I enjoy cell shaded way more than chibi style, but here we are. I do more like the original's graphics, which are 2D sprites based. I also think Sword and Shield graphics looks way better than these graphics. Sinnoh is one of my favorite regions because it is a very diverse world with all sorts of areas like wintry mountains, caves, beaches, cities, big and small. Music. All of the familiar tunes and soundtracks from the originals are found in this one, only remade and made more fun. And they sound a bit more modern. There are still no voice acting, but that isn't something that we are expecting either, since mainline Pokemon games has never had them. The startup sound made me feel very nostalgic, how to say. That is the thing with music or even sound effects. They have the ability to whisk you away to another time. It's so nostalgic, it is so powerful. And I felt for some moments that I was back in 2007 or something. It was amazing. Battle music can be stressful. And sometimes when I'm doing a lot of battles one after the other, the music gets so tiring that I end up lowering the volume and play with no music, no sound. Uh, stressful battle music. <laughs> Verdict! That was like... <laughs> There are no real differences between the Pearl and Diamond versions except some exclusive Pokemons are found in one of them and not in the other. In case you were wondering, there isn't a big difference. And also, have to mention, this game is easy. Easy. Maybe a bit too easy. If this game is too easy for you, I recommend Shin Megami Tensei 5. <laughs> it's a harder Pokemon. Also, some things feel very slow, like the amount of time spent from entering a battle until you can do your first move or select run. Feels like it is too many seconds, it's a lot of waiting. Same goes with planting the berries. It feels like it takes too long of a time to click on the tree and get the berry and do 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 do. It should have been more faster. So I end up choosing not to replant the berries because of this. Another thing, it, it's, it's just 
my biggest gripe is that it is too easy. I don't like that you can see which attacks are effective, not effective, and super effective. I don't like that we can see that. That is something that I am used to that we are to remember on our own, is just easy mode. Also, there are XP share, which means all of the Pokemons in your party gets XP. It's too easy. <laughs> But I'm not hating it. I mean, I, I have so many games that playing a game that's super easy, it's such a big time saver in a way. <laughs> that is such a terrible problem to have. But yeah, <laughs> it is sort of time saving though, I guess. I mean, I'm just trying to see the positive into this. And another thing is that all HM moves, you know, fly, strength, surf, they are now automated. And that also makes things a whole lot more easier than I would maybe prefer even. For me personally, I am no longer in my biggest Pokemon hype as I was back in the day, but I can clearly see how this remake can recreate that magical feeling to someone else and get just as obsessed as I was in 2006 and 7 with the original. I am giving Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pearl, Shining Pearl, Brilliant Diamond, a 7 out of 10 because they are solid games. This is my score and for the love of God, don't take my scorings too seriously. They are personal. Uh, this could just as well be a 9 out of 10 for someone else that gets super obsessed into the addicting nature of a Pokemon game because there are so many things that can make you super addicted, like filling the Pokedex, shiny Pokemon hunting, being the best in the online matches, that is also a whole thing. People are so into that, some people. Either way, I hope you will enjoy this game. Now that was all for today from Isha Gaming. I'm signing off, that is not my usual ending. I usually say, thank you, th no way. <laughs> I usually say, thank, thank, wait. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Check out my podcast, Discord, server, server. <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, I am everywhere. Subscribe and hit like before you leave and a comment. Thank you so much. I will see you later